to have all of you here. I've got Joel and Steph wave. Stephanie is my twin sister. Joel is her husband. They are my beloved coworkers. And I've got Hubei, my amazing coworker Hi. over here. And you Hi, know what? Good evening. We just finished our live in Portuguese and we have so many stories to tell about these amazing artists talking about special effects, makeup, all the different things. We're just going to jump right in. Joel and Steph, why don't you guys go ahead and start with the first pictures and Hobe will be telling stories and Joel and Steph and that way we can just hop right in and welcome to the making of Tatelestai. Awesome. Yeah, tonight we're going to run through some different things that have to do with the art department. Um, so the production of props, of scenes, of special effects makeup, of special effects Lot to pyrotechnics. Hube was here with us hey. as a pyrotechnic. This, um, yeah, this is my job. Uh, I, I love it to work uh, with uh, uh, God's, uh, God's uh, with my, you use it my job to, to do this, this material, Tetelestai. Amen, amen. All right, well, why don't you go ahead and things start? for God. <laughs> Thank you, Barry. And a lot of other things, right? <laughs> a good explosion. <laughs> yes. So we're, we're going to be running through costuming tonight, um, as well as some set making, prop making, yeah. and visual effects as well. Some of the, the 3D work and the compositions we, we had to do for Tatelestai. So. And we have let's, 11 episodes to cover with art department, which is So let's huge. see how many so, of them we actually fit in there. Let's see how many we can cover. Portuguese, we didn't get quite through all of them. So we're going to try on English. So we're going to show you guys first of all, is this playing now? Yes. Okay. So I can talk over it. Okay. These videos are showing you the location where we actually got the cloth. Um, this is actually our footage. And the machines were very, very, very old machines, but but um, in the state that we live in, about six hours from here are two of the city, main cities that make the hammocks for a huge amount, a huge part of Brazil. And they also make a lot of natural cotton stuff. So that's all the, these two cities would do. And so we had a huge amount of natural cotton to work with. And we had to stuff um, our truck with all the cost or all the cloth that we were going to buy for the entire 11 series so it was episodes. 11 episodes it was a huge challenge and it was a lot of fun and but we really wanted natural cotton that has the thick weave and we ended up buying actually a lot of here you can see the thick weave on it just because it looks so much more organic and natural and you can tell the texture of it on film um one thing we we're able to do is buy already like made hammocks. I love how hot everybody is in that video. <laughs> I know, everyone's funny. Here you can see, I have a pile actually, these are small hammocks, but it was, it was the variety that we wanted because you couldn't buy a massive amount of, um, we didn't want the same, obviously, cloth. And they didn't buy a whole spindle of cloth if you wanted a certain pattern. Right, so we were able to buy lots of different hammocks that had different patterns on it. But obviously these are very bright colors. So we had to put it through a bleaching, um, bleaching and acids to actually take down that color. Here's my dear mommy that helped with all of the um, sewing by little hand dimples. of all of the costumes. And then we would add natural um, organic like detailings on it. And we had to design all the outfits and then See how brightly colored this is? So you can tell it's not what you see in Tatelestai. They had to go through process of aging, bleaching, and dyeing of even like natural organic that we would just get natural cotton color. Oh, here we're person. dyeing it, boiling. And here is aging it because you don't want to wear something that looks like you came out of a pageant. You want to wear clothes that looks like they've been worn and used. And so we would actually rub it on concrete on the cement, we would scrub it. We put grease on it. Sandpaper. Sandpaper it. I mean, it went through an intense aging um, process. All of the costumes did. Here is boiling our um, costumes. Let me explain really quick to everybody that's tuning in right now. Um, our work was all done on a big property that we live in. So we were able to utilize 
um, the whole area for the cost making, props making, uh, even set building uh, for a lot of it. So it's our home and it's also what we decided to use because we were living on it and it's a big property to build and make a lot of the stuff. So here you can see wigs that we use with a lot of girls that um, didn't have natural hair color. And here you can see a lot of the, the, the you can see how now they're all toned down colors that kind of blend in. They're more organic looking and they're getting ready. We, at one point we had over 2, 000, uh, 200 outfits made that well, the our biggest crowd, our largest too. crowd was over 200. Here's my mom that was so excited about being one of the scenes finally because she was obviously making the costumes and this is the opening of the room. Aw, she looks so cute. <laughs> and I'm going to let Joel and Hobe talk about the Roman costumes. Yeah, and so Hobe, when it came to the Roman. Uh, yes. When you want to well, say something, it would be fun if you said it in Portuguese so that our American and British and Australian audiences could hear your Portuguese and I can translate for you if you want. Uh, yes, uh, but I, I I know a little bit of speaking of English, but I can I will speak in Portuguese right now because my English is so bad. É, essa, essas armaduras elas chegaram novinhas. E, and so um, this armor that we got, we got it brand new. Yeah, but nós precisamos envelhecê-las e fazer golpes de armas reais nelas. So in order to age them to make them look more realistic, we had to actually bang them up with actual like swords, like using uh -huh. the swords to hit them so that it actually looked like um, battle scars on the armor. Uh -huh, sim. Você consegue ver a diferença aí. E so if you look at this picture, you can see the difference. Mm -hmm. é. E isso é que trouxe mais originalidade às cenas, porque senão elas ficariam muito, muito fakes, né? Muito... <laughs> this is what made the scenes look authentic and not fake. Uh -huh. Sim. Muito like a one. Tem outras, Joel, quer falar algo Tá. Essa, essas armaduras é, nos romanos na realidade usaram metais como armaduras. Um, the Romans were actually used a lot of metal armor. Sim, mas para as filmagens na, no estilo que filmamos mais rústicos usamos couro de, de boi. But being as to tell a style was, um, we went for a more uh, rustic style. We actually uh, used the leather from a, a whole cow. Sim. E o Joel, ele foi uma pessoa realmente muito usada por Deus para fazer essas armaduras ficarem tão reais, tão realísticas nas filmagens. Joel was truly anointed by God to be able to have the skills and the talents to be able to do the leather working for this armor for the Roman soldiers. I think you have some Sim. more videos and stuff where they show up as Sim. well, right? Eu sei que, eu sei que ele, foi yeah. muito, ele foi tão usado que ele chegou a usar uma armadura dessa para eu golpear com a espada para aparecer marcas de batalha. Can you put it on? <laughs> foi. In foi. fact, they even put them on and then used them, banging them up with swords. <laughs> and it was as if they were having a battle in order to actually put the dents and scars and the marks on it. That's amazing. Uh -huh. That's why I just tell us that I saw awesome. uh -huh. Yeah. There was no way to do it without wearing it. <laughs> That's just incredible. Had, you just had to wear it. That's incredible. That's amazing. Uh -huh. See. You think my sobre as armaduras. Oh, yeah, you can é o... see how brand new they look. Sim, wow. é do, do centurião, né? É para você ver como era tão novo e como... As you can see, the centurion before and after. Sim. Foram modificadas algumas coisas, como a crina, né? A parte de cima. Oh, wow. Well, actually, um, the, you made part of that, sorry, Sim. can you? Oh, a, a Stephanie awesome. pode falar algo a respeito deles aí. Também. He said Stephanie could tell the rest of the stories about <laughs> these guys and how they acted. <laughs> oh, no, I was saying it was fun. I, I was telling the other live it was really funny because when these guys would put on these outfits their whole personality would change and they would become soldiers and they would like oh they loved it they loved it all the guys would just like be growing glowing <laughs> oh soldier <laughs> this this Battle. this in, this into your body is like my body yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like identical identical who be were so telling us in the last live that in order to make that ripped centurion uh, look, yeah. that they used his body as a mold. So, um, if you hear that, <laughs> no, 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 hear I, that? I, 
I use my surfboard uh, my surfboard <laughs> to make this. Yes. You better explain that why how you use the surfboard. So if you yeah, read that somewhere on an ur it's an urban legend. We did not use Hubei's body, but we did use his surfboard. And Joel's gonna tell us. We did sorry. use his surfboard. <laughs> yes, we used his surfboard. Surfboards are, are made out of a really thick foam, and so they're really easy Dense to carve. Too. And so um Hubei carved out the the muscles on it, and then we put a fiberglass my, my muscles, over my muscles. Yeah, your muscle. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. We put fiberglass over it and then um, drew a piece of leather over that and you pour boiling hot water over it and, and mold amazing. it and you push it in. And then it becomes almost like a really hard plastic feel when you take it off there and you trim it up. And yeah, yeah it's there was really a lot of fun nice. using different techniques on the leather. That's awesome. Awesome. And like you uh, said, they really, oh, look at that. You get a nice close up of the details there. It's just amazing. And that's yeah, it was really a lot of work. Stephanie, this is your area. Tell makeup. us a little bit yeah. why hey. this is so important. Makeup. So I did the special effects makeup in Patel's guys. So um, here we have Joel as Jesus, and he, compared to all his disciples, looked very white. So we <laughs> needed to darken his skin up. And here is just practicing and darkening his skin up with a special uh, product that we had. You can tell his shoulders are a lot whiter. And I, don't know. I think I if I remember out. correctly, I think if I remember correctly, you guys used the same type of makeup that they use for the King of Siam or something yeah, like that. Yeah, the right? King and I. The, the movie, King and I. Well, it, was, okay. it was developed for the movie, The King and I. I see. His skin. Yul Brenner, right? Yeah, the old King and I. Yes. Here, here is doing um getting the makeup ready for the scenes of the cross, which was three days of filming. Um, Stephanie, so how long every... did it take you to put on the makeup every time? So the makeup was around three hours every time for the applications on the cross, but um, I also had to do um makeup on Mary on one of the days. So it was almost six hours of work before this, this wow. scene. Here you can see um, my our little son, Judah, in the background. He was only oh. six months old. So we kind of had to drag him along too, poor thing, because it was long days of filming. So, and he was nursing at the time. So, and then wow. here you can see. And, it was and challenging because we had to take pictures of every little detail on everything because it had to be imitated every single day we filmed so that's amazing so three days of filming three hours of makeup for every day and there you see a close-up of mary so you had to age her face tell us about that so yeah so because obviously mary uh was filmed in um episode seven mm -hmm. um she had she was at the cross and so we had i had to age her too to be in the scene for when she was with the foot across. She wasn't very prominent in the shot. So it wasn't like I'd had, I didn't have to have too much detailing in there, but she had to look a lot older and in the background. And then here, obviously, you can see. So that was another good three hours. Here's Dole messing with his sores. Wow. And so every single scar, every single bruise, every single blood, everything had to look the same, obviously, seamlessly. I had to try to match up. Hubing, you had some stories for this shot. Tell us a little bit more about why this was such a challenging thing for putting um, Jesus on the cross there. Uh -huh, yeah. Tell uh, us in Portuguese, though, because yes. everyone wants to hear it. Yes. Uh, essa cruz, esse, essa madeira, aqui no Brasil, é muito difícil de achar. But, but so just to start with, just the wood itself is hard. Age. It's difficult Sim. to find this type of wood here Sim. in Brazil. Porque aqui no Brasil ela é muito cara e não você não acha madeira com essa assim envelhecida como ela. We couldn't find it aged the way that we needed it and it was so expensive to find. If you buy the wood size. like that, it's newly Isso. cut. Isso. Right. Yeah. Ah, então nós fomos numa numa loja que tinha móveis antigos para alugar. Né? E... Para alugar? Isso, para alugar. Para alugar. And... But there was a furniture store that you could um, rent old-fashioned furniture. Então, então, enquanto Johnny falava sobre o projeto Tetelestai para o dono da loja, evangelizando 
Yeah. Well, Johnny, one of our coworkers, he shows up in the scene. He's all the way to the left, was um, talking to the guy of the furniture store and actually witnessing to him as well. É, eu fui, eu, eu resolvi ir no quintal da loja para olhar que a porta estava aberta e eu vi essa mulher lá. I decided to go scout out their yard since the door was open. <risos> Aí eu chamei Johnny e apontei aquela madeira perfeita para cruz. And I said, look, Johnny, look at the wood that's sitting over there. That is like perfect for the cross. Então ele virou para o homem, aí o homem falou para ele, pode levar de vocês. Wow. And he turned to the man and talked to him. And I never heard that story before. That's amazing. He turned to the man and the man said, you can take it. It's yours. And that's amazing. That's amazing. That's incredible. Aí eu fui parar na cruz. Eu e Joel por causa disso. Ah, <laughs> 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 you'll you have to explain that, you. that in a little bit. Tell us a little bit, uh, Joel, about the process for you, to, why it was so painful, because Joel played the part mm -hmm. of Jesus. What's so amazing in this live, we hear him telling all the artistic stories of the making of, and yet Joel then had to be in front of the camera as well. So filming with the camera, making props, and then playing the part of Jesus. But this was actually super painful. Tell us a little bit more about it. Yeah, it was actually, uh, physically, it was the hardest thing to act uh, in the series, obviously. Um, you can see I'm standing on a little piece of wood there. Um, and even that became painful after a while. Oh. Um, and then if you look at my back, I'm strapped in. Um, I had a, 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 little, a little harness that was helping me, helping hold me up. And then I would get my hands tied up as well to help be able to put my weight on different points at different times to try to be able to stay up there longer. But even with all of those aids, I could only be up there for about 20 minutes at a time. My heart would start thumping. Actually in, in, in post-production, I had to freeze my heart when I was supposed to be dead because you could actually just see my heart pumping in my oh, chest yeah. after being up scary. there. Uh, yeah, it was a little scary, it, but it, it's a nasty position to be in. And, and I think that somebody in that position that without even being nailed up there would probably die in a couple of days just from That's being crazy. up there. That's crazy. I remember uh, just the, the spiritual intensity of it as well. So a lot of prayer went into all of these things, a lot of logistics. But I remember the scenes where you had to say to tell us die and then you would die and you had to be perfectly still. And we all knew how much pain you were in by that time of hanging up there. Like you said, 20 minutes max. It felt like everybody stopped breathing with you and it was just, oh, it's horrible. It was just really awful. Yeah, and I remember one time after I died, it went for like 45 seconds before calling cut and I wasn't able to breathe. <laughs> I was oh. like, call cut, call cut. <laughs> uh, I, did, I did sound like you. <laughs> and um, so who bang actually, but you're gonna show those scenes in just a little bit, right, Joel? Later on? Yeah. Who Hubei also was able to get up on the cross. We only had yeah, one experiment cross. Experiment a little bit. Yeah, we, we only had one cross, so we had to um, duplicate it in, in post. We needed three crosses for the wide shot. Um, so I'll, I'll get down to that, and then we'll move on to some to some other stuff. So you can see Hubei. Wait, back up one real quick. You want to see what? Because it shows Mary in the background. Hey, did, did you remember? Yeah, there's Mary. Did you, Mary in the background. You didn't remember okay. uh, was was too hard to put uh, this this cross on the rock because yeah, this is, this is to better. securely put it on the on the. It was a solid rock, so we couldn't dig a hole to to sink the the cross into. So we had to build up with stones and cement around the base, um, mm -hmm. and it was, so it was a little nervous getting up there. You know, we're like, is this thing gonna hold? Uh, and you're strapped in. Um, but after we were done, we tied a rope to the top of the cross and pulled it with a four by four, a Land Rover. And then the wood started breaking at the bottom, but the cement never came off. So we were like, okay, I, I think it was, it was secure. Enough, but it was secure. <laughs> wow. Well, Bing, didn't you say something about the feeling of falling forward was the scariest thing? Uh, oh, yeah, so the wind, the, when the wind coming, uh, I the, the shake up the cross, the cross. I'm so scared. No, no, I, I, I can't. I I can't. Because, my last because my, my, my arm is, 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 is hold on it. Tied, tied. Yes, it's tied. I will fall down with my face on the. Oh top. my goodness. No, it's I'm going to die. Strange. Very, very crazy. Very crazy. Here's like, um, because it was only one cross, we had to 
this is, this is the scene of darkness covering the land for three hours. There's Hubei on the right. And John on the left. Yeah. I, I passed it through 20 minutes, only 20 minutes. It's crazy though, wasn't it? Yeah, because we had a tiny crew. So the whole crew would go up and help whoever was going to be on the cross. We'd help them to get up on the cross, tie them down. And the whole crew would run down across the, the little valley thing to where the camera was. And then we would film and then you have to run up and get the person again. So. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Amazing. Hey, did, you, did you remember the, the toys on the crown? The, crown? the tabernacle. Is, is a real toys. Oh, yes. yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, we actually made that out of a tree that we have here on our property. Cut cut those thorns out and wove it. And so I would put it on and then have to cut a little bit of the thorns until I could get it all the way down without uh, cutting into my puncturing your skull. But it, it only fit one specific way, so I had to I had to get it on that way every time. These scenes here um, are actually of the tabernacle and the Ark of the Covenant. Um, they're some of my favorite scenes in Tetelis. I I love seeing. The Ark of the Covenant and the High Priest coming in. And oh, you know, I know it's amazing. Ten. Um, so we weren't able to go down to Walmart and pick up an Ark of the Covenant, so <laughs> we, we had to we had to build that one. Um, but it, it, it took a while, but it, it was also a lot of fun. Hubei was involved in helping. Um, we were sculpting angels and wings, and All the team John and, and Arlen this, were were helping this. with the bottom and the background that you can see there. Um, yeah, everybody pitched in on this one, uh, and I, I, I love the Ark of the Covenant. I love how it fits in this frame really nice. It is amazing, it. and for a lot of people who watch to tell style, like I remember when Josh McDowell, when we watched this um, episode with him in his home, he said, man, I, I learned things in this episode that I have never known all my life. I have never thought That's about cool. these different concepts. This is just incredible. So yes, it is. It's also one of my favorite scenes as well. It's incredible. Yeah. So so here we, we have just a lot of different pictures of the whole process. Um, paper mache on on the angels and um, I like paper mache clay. Though. Yeah, paper mache clay. Um, the wings. We also had. I don't even know how you what you call the the product that you use. It's a it's a glue uh, clay. Like it's a glue based clay. Yeah, it's a glue based, oh. yeah, it's a glue -based oh, oh. Uh, epoxy clay. Yeah, so, so we applied this this type of a clay onto the wings, uh, sealed the whole thing up. I'm going to go pretty quick through here. You don't need to see the whole process. Um, but we all had a lot of fun. The whole team came together. This is a workshop where we were building building the sets. The whole team came together to be able to get the Ark of the Covenant done. And now we store all of our tents in it. Yeah, <laughs> our giant tents that we had to sew. The headpiece for the... For the um, high priest as well. We yeah, had to figure yeah. out how to write holy to the Lord, separated unto the Lord on his head in ancient Hebrew um, because it's a different alphabet. Uh, this also is one of my favorite props. I think they're all my favorites. No? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> because you um, did. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I just love how this came out because we were trying to, to tie in how the bronze serpent was a picture of Christ taking our curse Giving, giving us life when we were condemned to death. Um, and so we came up with this design where the bronze serpent actually looked like it's on a cross. Um, it almost looks like you have an arm going up there on one side as well. And so in, in the last episode, we were tying all of these pieces together. The imagery of the bronze serpent ties in really nicely it's, with the cross. It's very visually impactful. It's a, it's a yeah. wonderful scene. Yeah, here's Johnny putting some plaster. We, we had a... It was an interesting process of building this as well. We had conduit and clay. Surfboard and head, right? Surfboards <laughs> and fiberglass and yeah, fiberglass. copper, copper, and copper sheet foil. Yeah, copper foil sheets that were put on it. Yeah, another really cool thing was um, we found a potter shop and, and we were able to find a couple of the things that they had already made that, that worked for Tetelestai. But uh, we took printouts of pots that they had found in archaeology on archaeological digs in Israel. And we handed it to them and said, could you make these as well? And how much would you charge? They said, oh, no, we would just charge the normal. They charge by weight. You know, we just yeah. charge the normal one. I, it'll be fun to make something different. 
not only that, these guys unbelievably are talented. These, they're making these pots like the old fashioned way. It's these heavy A things that they're kicking with their foot. To make this wheel go around. It's amazing. I wish we had filmed that. Too. I was thinking the same thing. I wish we had filmed the whole process. Yeah. Yeah, we were actually thinking. Then, of course, everything needs to be aged, you know, for everything yep. to fit together. Um, we had to age everything along the way. Which is why to tell style looks so good. So authentic. <laughs> this scene, let's see, how are we doing on time? I think we're doing great. Think this, We're this doing great. We filmed Got lots of time. In, in, in like an empty lot on the other side of the wall next to next to the property here. Um, set up all these tents, the same tents that are now stored in the Ark of the Covenant. Um, <laughs> these sheep were lit by a university. Th this, was, this property was full of um, brush and we had to bring a tractor in, clear it all out, rake up all the old, all, all of the brush that, we, that was back in there. I'm going to skip through these really quick so you can see. Our kids were really little, um. uh, but they enjoyed the process too, taking their trucks out there, playing in the sand, uh, raking up all, all of those so we can set the tents up. They're, they're supposed to be, the Israelites are supposed to be out in the desert. So we, we needed the deserty ground. And then with the tents, we were able to block off the green backgrounds. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. Look at me play oh. there again. Oh, oh. You're so bad out here. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Pooping without a beard. All the uh -huh, various yeah. faces and many uh, less tattoos. I was played there also. And this beard. is um the tabernacle scenes are actually miniatures. So when you guys watch that, you'll see all the work. Oh, I wish you making. had those scenes to show tonight. Mm -hmm. I love that. I know. We'll have to do another live. But this was um the tabernacle scenes and and then the inside of the tabernacle was also done. Ten Commandments. Um, we basically we made them out of concrete, and so they actually were heavy, like a, heavy. a rock tablet would have been. Um, a lot of movies you see they're like really light, and Moses is just kind of swinging his arms around as he comes down <laughs> with the stone tablet. Um, <laughs> nothing is nothing is very it. fake with Tatelstein. Everything is like how no, it, it, it was heavy. <laughs> how do we yeah. make sweat walking down the mountain to turn those heavy pieces of rock? Uh, do, do you remember? So, do you remember? We we use it this to this 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 material to fix it, the tent to put in the the, the tent. Oh, to hold as a weight. To, to hold yeah, the, the flaps hold of the, the tent down hold, so that the wind didn't blow them around. Yeah, <laughs> probably. Yeah. So yeah, we then we if you you can see the rock in the background there, we would um, pulverize that rock and then glue it onto the surface of the cement um, from the same rock where we actually filmed the scene of Moses coming down with the Ten Commandments. Again, here we had to go into Hebrew and figure out how to write the, the biblical Hebrew in ancient Hebrew because that mm -hmm. alphabet, um, the alphabet they use now only came from Babylon. Before Babylon, they wrote in a completely different script. I think one of the things that I really like about this picture is the little tiny blue uh, fingernail polish that showed up in that last <laughs> picture and the tiny little foot on the plastic chair. Yes, one of the kids showing off the Ten Commandment tablets. <laughs> yes, <laughs> which were crazy, crazy heavy. Oh, I'm glad you have time to show these. These are amazing. Yeah, so now we're getting into um, some more of the visual effects. The special effects are, are in camera and visual effects are done uh, in post-production. And the scene of the animals coming to the ark was actually one of my biggest fears. Um, I was imagining, you know, fields with animals yeah, coming. You, you, you normally see that in pictures. And so it's the first thing that pops up into your head. And we were looking at how to film animals. You need them filmed at the right angles and the right lighting conditions and everything. But you yeah, need that budget. hundreds, if not thousands uh, of, <laughs> of animals to do that. And I was talking with John. He's like, why don't we just use something where there's layers and you, and you can't necessarily see all of the animals. Um, but you get a feeling that there's a lot of animals. And so brilliant, the um, ideas coming. It was, it, it was. Um, I think this is the scene I lost slept over. It's the only scene that I lost <laughs> sleep over. Oh. Um, <laughs> we wonder how are we going to do that scene? That's only um, because you knew you weren't going to be crucified then. <laughs> or you didn't know. True. <laughs> yes. True. So this is in post-production though. 
So yeah, and this oh, was yes. done in post-production. Jonathan did the arc model in, in 3D. And then um, I did the compositing and after effects with the animals. And we actually didn't have to purchase any footage or hire any animals to be filmed. We were able to use stock footage and cut them out and footage that I had filmed already at zoos and stuff like that. Amazing. Um, and, and it actually turned out, it's probably one of my favorite animals coming to an arc scene that I've yes, seen. Yes, because, because so realistic. It's yes. It's different. It's not the field full of animals. Um, this next section is-, is Oh, can um, you show it with the sound? It, so, it sounds so cool, Joel. Sure. Yes, I will. Um, it, it's the flood scenes. Uh, we had an earlier edit of Tetelestai that did not have these scenes in it. Uh, it was just lots of like waterfalls and water crashing and um, like it no wasn't very it. impactful, but we knew how much time it would take to do it well, especially, I mean, we, we had almost no budget for this as well. And so we had to do it really on the cheap. Um, and <laughs> so it was gonna be a huge challenge. It seemed impossible to be honest, which is why we had first done a, an initial edit without these scenes. So I'll, I'll show you now the, the flood scenes and then we're gonna go through a little bit of the, the visual effects work that went into making it happen. On that day, all the springs of the great deep burst forth and the floodgates of the heavens were opened. For those who had delayed their decision thinking, if it really starts raining, then I'll enter the ark. It was too late. The door was shut. By waiting to believe, they had rejected life. God's word had really come to pass, and in one terrifying moment, they realized they had rejected the truth. They had turned their backs on God, God who had provided one way for them to be saved. And now it was too late. But everyone inside of the ark was safe. For 40 days, the flood kept coming on the earth. And as the waters increased, they lifted the ark high above the earth. All the high mountains under the entire heavens were covered. Every living thing that moved on the earth perished. After a little over a year in the ark, the Lord caused the waters to recede and eventually the ark came to rest on the mountains of Ararat. You survived, Cynthia? Yes, yes, I did. But Arlen said I wasn't on the camera, so that was good. <laughs> so, yes, I love those scenes. Those are absolutely amazing. The crazy thing is though, for those of us who are just used to watching movies and appreciating them, we just watch it, we're like, wow, that's amazing. But never in your wildest dreams can you even imagine what goes into it. So maybe um, let us in a little bit on these secret stories. Yeah, well, um, we knew that water was really difficult um, to make in 3D. And so we, we get started shopping around for a post house to be able to, to put the ark in, in the floodwaters. Uh, and the quote we got back was $70,000 for 15 seconds if we give them the ARC model. Oh my goodness. So just the water. Just for the water, so 70000 15 000. seconds, $70,000. And we, were and like, we had ha, five ha, ha. scenes, <laughs> five 15 second uh, scenes. I know. I, I think so. <laughs> Oops, I think I got kicked off the share. Uh-oh, there we go. Are you back? Yeah. Okay, I think so. awesome. Well, tell us a little bit about how this, well, here we go. Gonna see some of the making of stuff. Yeah, so actually Jonathan, our coworker, was able to um, learn a 3D program after we realized that we had nowhere near the budget to be able to afford these scenes. 
um, he was able to start studying a 3D program and build the arc, create the water. And then by blending the 3D scenes in with um, real footage that we were able to film and um, putting the comps together in After Effects, uh, we were able to come up with this this Mixing sequence, and realistic which, things too. It's amazing. which took us amazing. it took us over six months to make those two minutes uh, of video. But unbelievable. But yeah, and, and it really took the quality up. Um, and, and the goal all along was to make a product that people would like to see. Um, Amen. So it was worth spending those six months. Um, this is the scene here of the rain. We got this amazing stock footage of a rainstorm coming. John created the city. And then in post-production using depth mats and stuff like that, we were able to bring this huge rainstorm covering the city. Um, let's see, I think we have a couple more here. We have this scene of a model being flooded by water. We had two pickup trucks um, filled with water. And we released this. the water on, onto this little model here. This is a model city. Um, and then that was also composited into a live action scene had a green screen in it of the actual characters and the water flooding. And like you said, the water just then slowed down to give the impact of it being actually it big, filmed huge in waves. slow motion. Yes, it All was right. filmed in slow motion. Okay. This is normal speed, but it was filmed in slow motion so that the water looks larger. Um, the um, You have to build, when there's physics involved in a model, you have to calculate the scale of the model. And the That's amazing. The that just blows my mind. To make it look real. Yeah. So this model was done over a period of two weeks and everything was miniature. It was a lot of fun. Hope we helped a lot with this model. It was just a lot of fun, wasn't it? Hobie? Everyone helped with this model. Arlen mm -hmm. and John. Yeah. Oh my goodness. It was it was just a lot of fun. And it was Anna was helping a lot with this model. It's amazing. A lot of detailing. Look at little Judah. But it's uh, huge. We say model, but it's absolutely huge for something to it's a it's a big model, yeah. It's, so, but it was all designed. The whole model is designed for one angle. So you look at the other angles, and everything's unfinished. And you know, there's only certain walls built, and all these little seeds. Everything and we we would go around in in the brush, finding little seeds from from. It's amazing. And, uh, now, 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 I've seen it. Go back for just a second. It. Go back where you were for just a second. Go back to where you were for that. Yeah. Now, see, I've seen the finished product and we just finished watching it, but we saw all the but scenes again. all oh, seamlessly right. put thing. together. Can you put it back again so we can see where this scene showed up in it? Yes. Just so yeah, I, and you could explain how this is. The back and then maybe part. we'll turn the sound off at this time and then you can tell us what's the model. Where's the OK, so then tell us, Reese, talk us through it. Okay, the next scene that you're going to see um, is a live action plate. We built a rain machine. Um, it's actually on our there. property here. Mm. Um, Unbelievable. So, oops. Um, so this scene is actually real life size. Not, it's not tiny. Like Joel said, they built a rainmaker over top of a real market. So real people running through a real life size market, real rain, but rain mm -hmm. that you control. Yes. Rainmaker. <laughs> okay. This pause. is this Tell is the shot that. that has the model city in the background. Um, okay. Well, for the actual shot, um, since we had real rain in it, it's actually really hard to see long distances through lots of rain. So it's actually pretty difficult to see. But we needed all of those details and textures and patterns um, in the walls and variations so that it looked more realistic. Um, okay. So if you pay attention, you're seeing massive waves are starting to pour through there. People are running. Yeah. So what you're seeing is the real things. market in the front, real life size people, and then the model in the background. And, and there then was, he added people digitally in, in the market. But they were real people that you had really yeah. filmed running, moving, falling. And then that was kind of funny too, because to film these people getting thrown around by the water, we would have of them on the green screen and another guy would run uh, at the person with a green screen pillow and like knock him in the air and another person would throw him on the, it was really funny to just okay. watch these guys throwing themselves around. So you constructed a life-size market, a rainmaker over top of it, filmed other people doing things in front of a green screen, falling down, getting knocked over. All yeah. This. 
then made a miniature, but miniature, I mean, it's a huge miniature, flooded it with two pickup trucks in just yeah. the right physics, and then blended all of these together. That's amazing. Yeah, That's and through the little people in the market. It was a lot of fun. It, it took us a week to build that model. I think it's two. Yeah. That's Maybe incredible. it was two weeks, but amazing. it was yeah, so, so long ago. That one scene is three days of filming. So it was the live action scene, it was the model scene, and the scenes of the um, green screen people as well. I remember the kids being excited about testing out the rainmakers. Yeah. Yes. The kids Running love in those and out of storms. Coming <laughs> gravando. Yes. And then here's our, our day at the lake. Um, we had so much fun filming people drowning. Um, it's a beautiful lake, as you can see, the water is gorgeous. I had to take all that blue out in post-production because it's not supposed to be nice. Everyone's um, gonna uh, wanna move to Brazil after finding about the making up stories of Tatelstai. Yeah, we, we had a lot of fun. We, we actually just bought, we bought a little GoPro camera to be able to film underwater. Uh, so we didn't, we didn't have any underwater housings or anything. And those, those clips just, just cut right in. That's amazing. Uh, that wasn't our high priest dying in the water, was it? No, no. Okay. It was it was a different guy. Um, this is showing some of John's work. This is the um, the 3D work that he did on the ocean and the arc. Um, and then he would send that over to me, and I would do the compositing using depth mats for the the mist and That's adding amazing. in waves splashing and the rain, mm -hmm. filming rain, creating rain, the clouds, the lightning. Um, and then it would have just, it, it all came together. And I was actually shocked when it did come together because I, we knew how hard it was. It, it, it was really, it was really a God thing because Amen. we knew it, this, this scene would have cost us $70,000 and, and Johnny learned the program to be able to do the water. We were able to composite it in a way that looked, looked really natural and we didn't spend a penny on it. Hubang, um, Hubang, I, th I think you've got a lot of noise coming from your microphone. Yeah. Can you turn your microphone off? Oi. Who vem tá tá tendo muito ambiente que tá acontecendo. Tem alguém cantando lá no fundo? Awesome. Oh, look at that beautiful scene. All right, now we're getting into back into Steph's makeup territory again. Yeah, yeah, make, this, we're gonna we're gonna get into the rich man of Lazarus because these shots were actually really challenging. Tu tá com muito som no fundo, Ruben. We've got ten minutes. Fly us through it and tell us all about the secrets okay. of the special okay. effects makeup. So the special effects makeup was quite challenging because I didn't have the material I had that I did in the New Testament um makeup scenes but this was filmed at a, a castle we had around here which is really cool and it was quite challenging too because we didn't have running water we didn't have electricity we didn't have anything so, so this it is was Lazarus and the rich man this is Lazarus and the rich man and so we had to, and he obviously in the bible it says he's full of wounds and boils Ew. or something like that it was disgusting. so we had to make something look pretty nasty on him so um, you did an amazing job. Not going to explain all the process of makeup because it's complicated, but. Um, but then the rich man makeup too. For the next yeah. part of the so this is like oh, probably around, again, about three hours of makeup. And then um, the rich man too needed a burnt look. We just wanted him to look burnt, like in hell. And so you can't see him very well in here, but he's he looks like a crispy critter with burr things on him so oh that was and then crazy. the hell so i'm gonna let the guys get into this too because this is all their pyrotechnic and 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 stuff right here you'll see more makeup stuff but i can't really explain all the makeup on this with just 10 minutes left here so so these yeah. these were the first scenes that hubei actually participated with because hubei is a pyrotechnic so mm -hmm. i will let hubei explain about the the hell shot and how he got involved with light and action quickly oh, though <laughs> oh, bem, nos fala em frases bem curtinhas só que tem que ligar seu microfone de novo nos fala em frases curtas yeah. o que que como é que foi a filmagem do inferno eu vou trazer here you can see the makeup can't hear you oh my goodness tá me ouvindo agora tá só que tem muito ah pronto agora tá bom o som tá bem alto então 
legal. É, é, foi bem difícil porque a área que nós filmamos ela era uma área preservada, né? Hell was a were difficult scenes to film because we were actually filming in a nature reserve é, or like então, a não... protected area. Isso, era um sítio, é um sítio arqueológico lá. It was like an archaeological dig. Sim, então o fogo que devíamos usar lá seria um fogo que não agredisse a superfície. So we had to actually use fires that would not leave any sort of traces later and wouldn't harm the environment. Sim, então alguns fogos que usamos são os fogos chamados fogos indoors, in, uh, fireworks, indoors fireworks. Oh, indoor fireworks were then used in the making of these scenes. Sim, e outros tivemos que fazer uma espécie de iluminação cênica como se fosse brasas entre as rochas. And then there were different other techniques that they were using that were in between different rocks, giving different dimensions that were kind of like a burning ember type feel. Sim, you, this was, you, you guys have to realize this is inside a huge cavern in under that we had to repel things down. And Hubei had to pull the energy from uh, electricity. A that we put way far away because we were trying to actually get audio on these shots. So it was really far away, the generator, pulling in electricity into just so you, about a kilometer walk to the So you're location. in an archaeological dig. You had to climb down this tiny little crevice in the ground, yes. rappel down into a cave, and work with fire under extremely oh, hot so conditions, good. right? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it was really hard because where Hubeng is standing, you can see it down here, it's all really, really uneven rock. So we're trying to not break an ankle or... It was very difficult, wasn't it, Hubeng? Uh -huh. hey, 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 did you tell them uh, how do you... Uh, uh, I, I started to work with the Light Nation and the church. Do you remember when you found me there? Okay. Tell them Go ahead and tell that story real quick, um, Joel, that we were recruiting actors for to tell us to tell us I was filmed with a thousand volunteer actors and we showed up at Hubei's church. You can take a look at him. You know, he came from a surfer church and Joel will tell the story. Yeah, so we showed up, we were recruiting actors, signing people up, taking pictures. And at the time, Hubei had short hair, no beard. He looked <laughs> You can see him in the picture. <laughs> uh, young guy. <laughs> Yeah, he, he used to look like you could trust him. So, so we're like, okay, uh, yeah, I guess I guess we'll let him help. He wanted to help sign people up and uh, take pictures. Um, and so he started talking with us. He's like, hey, guys, I'm actually a pyrotechnic. So if you guys need any help in any area, if you need fire for anything or explosions or, you know, I love exploding things for God. So uh, if you guys would need any help we're like oh yes we were we were planning the hell sh the hell shots uh right at that time actually and so we had and, no idea and... how we were gonna do it no idea nope no we didn't no we didn't um, we already had done the lazarus shots yeah Which we is... had we had done we had done the first section but we needed to do the, um the second section with heaven and hell and the conversation between abraham and lazarus um, god knew that we needed hubing and God knew that Hubei needed us. And God brought all of us together. And um, not only did Hubei take all of his skills from making rock concerts come to life with like fire and all of that, he took that and used it for God's glory and did some of the most challenging things, but then became one of the main props maker and artist with Tetelestai. Uh, th this time, this time it was when I started my my walk with for Jesus Christ, a real, a real life with for Jesus. Oh, uh, amen! And that was a that was an amazing time. And um, Stephanie, tell us a little bit about. Um, I think I don't remember if you have any more videos that are coming up, but I don't we know, have, uh, Arlen, how many? We have five more. Minutes. I mean, we can, I don't minutes. know if you can go over or no. We got five minutes. Go ahead and show us some more. Okay. So Hubei actually ended up living on the same property with us. So that's why he was so involved in, in so much of the art production um, and acting. Every time we needed a stand-in or, or an extra, it's like, hey, Hubei, come on over here. Yes. So, so Hubei <laughs> appears almost more than anyone else. And actually, after we finished the Telestai, um, Hubei decided he wanted to join our ministry. So he is now a missionary with us 
on loan to another ministry, but he will be coming back in yes. January to join us uh, again. Uh, so. I, I stopped my surfer life, my skateboard life uh, to to work with uh, God. Uh, if this guy's be, today, this guy's is my family. I love Amen. it so much. <laughs> Oh, we'll still let you surf. No, no worries. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we, we just have a couple of little fun videos um, awesome. to end things off. Um, more on the visual effects side of things, the computer generated imagery. Um, we have a putting lot more to show, together. But when we started to tell Stai, um, we were very ignorant as to the process of making something like the Bible come to life with so many um, miracles and big scenes and so it was really a learning process um we didn't we didn't ever want to give up uh quality you know Amen. um we had a, an amazing message to tell the most important message to tell and we didn't want the quality of the series to get in the way of somebody listening mm -hmm. um so we studied a lot we worked very hard in learning all of these different things um including visual effects mm -hmm. including um yeah Put, putting scenes together. So we have just a couple of fun um, VFX breakdowns and, and then we can close things off. Mm. You could probably explain to you because I don't know if you're going to do audio, right? No, these don't have any audio. So a, a lot of the different um, scenes in the series um, had like this paper texture. We had different maps. Um, we had the, the, the whole intro to the series is kind of done in this style where it's drawing uh, on, a, on a textured paper. Um, with text coming in, we had um, different teaching points were sometimes illustrated on on paper, like the the deliverer being promised to all nations was was um, done in this style, as well as um, man being sinful, God being holy, sin bringing separation mm -hmm. between man and God. So um, this visual style is very much a 2D. There's nothing 3D about it. There's nothing filmed about it. It's it's all created in a in a 3d compositing program um and then we have we have a little bit more uh of compositing here um we had to stomp on a snake without hurting a snake um <laughs> so <Stop on> me. <laughs> um, so this is just a simple green screen shot um two shots put together uh, with a little bit of a time remap going on when the foot hits to, to accelerate the movement of the sure. snake. is this the snake that god brought to us is this the one we borrowed yeah, this is this no, no, this this one we've actually found on our property. And there you go. That's our banana the, grove. I think that's the only thing that might keep some of our droves of visitors away. This one <laughs> is a snake that just kind of came along to us. So. Yeah, but we found it in our banana grove. So we put them on a green screen at the right angle and, and the, the shot. It was the only time I've ever seen a big snake like this on this property. This kind. Um, and then also Brazil has the largest model of Jerusalem in the world. It's and actually so, rock from Jerusalem. Yeah, we were able to to film it. Um, this is another shot. There's no 3D elements, um, but there, you know, we had to do some camera tracking. We put some people in the green screen okay. down there as well. Amazing. Um, I love that shot. Yeah. So th these are all the fun shots. I love yeah, it. The it's people, so incredible. Yeah, actually the people, here we are when it pops up, here we are filming the people, actually. This is on top of our house. Um, you can see all of the different costumes there. because It's we had all to... in uh, Tetelstai. Our home is also in Tetelstai. And so we just had a little green screen set up out there in the yard. And we filmed them doing all kinds of different things and, and put them all together in, in the Amazing. temple courtyard there. That was funny. Here's another one. That, um, we did a little model of the temple, filmed it because it comes in from outside the temple and then goes into the temple. It's amazing. Um, John had to make that the menorah in 3D, you know, with a camera track going yes, through. Yes. And then beautiful. using the same camera information, uh, we filmed real fire, put the fire on, on the top of those as well. And this is obviously uh, inside the temple, um, curtain showing the curtain being ripped when, when Christ reads his last on the cross. Uh, it's beautiful. This scene as well, Hubei's, Hubei's carrying the body of Jesus here. I don't yes. know if he actually, there's, there's his feet. A, one of his starring shots. There he is. <laughs> You're gonna play that again so you can see the. Yeah, uh, I'll play it again. Um, so we found this amazing place. Place. This is actually right next to the castle where we filmed Lazarus. Um, this rock face. 
obviously there wasn't a hole in it, so we had to add that in. Johnny again did um, a 3D model of, of the opening there. We were able to add that into the scene. And then for all of these something shots. that I did never know is that you you made a styrofoam rock. Yeah, we took the texture from the rock face and then built a styrofoam uh, stone out of a surfboard again. We love old surfboards. I know, Carved right? It to get the right shadows um, to be and able to get the texture. The rock to the face rock. on that styrofoam. That's so cool. Oh, this one we've already seen, but then this this one obviously is almost all 3D um, with some real elements added in. So uh, it was a huge challenge. Bellstar was a huge challenge, especially for people without training in that area. You know, um, it took us a long time. Uh, we believe as a ministry, one of our values is excellence. We have an urgency to let people know, um, but we do not want to give up excellence. Uh, within that urgency. And so then the, the third value that we have is faith, you know, and so putting those three things together um, is is how our prayer is that that is something our ministry will be known by, is our faith, Amen. our excellence, and the urgency to get this message out. And so it did take a long time, you know, yes. <laughs> and because um, we did not give up on the, on the excellence. And, um, and at times we were like, well, what about urgency? But we were, it has gone so much further because we took the time that actually the task is going forward at such a greater speed than it would have if we had done, done the project quickly um, mm -hmm. and then convinced a couple of friends to use it. You know? um, Joel, there's a verse that meant a lot to us throughout the whole process in Exodus that tells about two people, Bezalel and Oholiab. Um, Maybe you can close off with that verse telling our listeners why those verses meant so much to us. Yeah, Bezalel was was chosen by God when Moses was given the, the design for the tabernacle. In the middle of the desert, you, you have a, a group of slaves who had just left Egypt. Um, God had told them to ask nicely for gifts from the Egyptians who had oppressed them for all nice. those years. Um, and they did. And, and the Egyptians willingly gave them um, gold jewelry, um, and sent them, on, sent them on their way. Please get out of here. We do not want any more of these plagues on our land. Yes. Um, and so if the, they, they go to Mount Sinai. And out at Mount Sinai, God gives Moses the law. And he gives Moses also the, the plan for the tabernacle. Um, and, and the tabernacle is ornate. It is beautiful. It needs craftsmen. It needs people who can work with gold. Um, he had provided the gold for them to be able to make the tabernacle. Um, but you have guys who are just building brick buildings and walls out there in the middle of the desert. Um, and uh, the, the really amazing thing about Bezalel is that God poured his spirit out on him to mm. give him the ability to craft and to teach other people how, how to build the instruments that God had told them to build in, in the desert. And we felt that that a lot of that was happening with our team as well. Um, our, our team Amen. was learning. We got in over our heads on this project uh, <laughs> because we were inexperienced, um, but we felt uh, every step of the way God was saying, no, it's gonna be okay. You guys can do it. Mm. Take your time, it's gonna be done well. Um, he was using us and he wants it to be used. He wanted it to be used more than we did. He loves people Amen. more than we do. You know, and, and so we felt that um, that enabling by him throughout this process uh, as well. So that's why those verses meant a lot. To Amen. Amen. And so we'd love to hear your stories as well. Thank you for watching and please share with your friends and make sure that you check out these episodes that we showed that Joel and Steph and Hubei showed some of the behind the scenes stories so you can check it out for yourself. And as you do, be reminded that this same amazing God that anointed and empowered us to create this wants to use you and also furthering the message of taking the gospel to the ends of the earth. And you can also continue to be a part of it through Light and Action by praying for us, keeping track of what's going on, and so that you can help take the message of the story of redemption and new films to reach unreached people groups all over the planet. So thanks for joining us and make sure that you send us your stories and your comments of what you thought about the life or any questions you might have for these amazing artists or maybe ways that you are using to tell us that. So thank you for joining us. Thank you, Hubing. Can't wait to see you Good in night. just a little bit.
Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, John. Bye. 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 Hey guys, thank you so much you for it's this not time. On. Thank you for it. It was very fun, and uh, ah. that's 